Today we are going to learn about hydrostatic pressure so that we can understand how the pressure varies in this column of oil and water. First, let's just talk about pressure. So, we have this column of, say, water that has a height of H and an area of A. So pressure at some point on the bottom after this height H and of this column area A, we know that the pressure P is equal to the weight of that column over its area. We know that the weight is mass times G, the area is A. We can do some simplification knowing that mass is equal to rho density volume G over A. And then based off of the fact that the volume of this column is its height times its area, we can make one more simplification by replacing volume with H A, which cancels out, and we will get rho H G for our pressure under that column. So that's very helpful when we start to think about this problem. The one other thing I'll add is that in the atmosphere we have a general pressure and I'll call that P0 here because I'm going to keep this, uh, keep this in coefficients rather than numerical. So think about the atmosphere. We have a huge column of air above us and that imposes a certain pressure on us. Uh, and I'll call that P0 here. So when we're thinking about P1, we need to understand the height of this column of oil, like I had here, and I'm going to call that H1. And we also need to know the density of this column of oil, which I'll call rho oil. The same goes for this column of water, H2, rho water. So let's start with pressure at position 1, P1. Like I said, the starting pressure at, this, at the top of this column of oil is the pressure from the atmosphere. But we also need to account for the pressure of the oil itself that it pretty much imposes on this point P1. And that is the pressure of the oil, sorry, the uh, density of the oil, the height of that column, H1, and the acceleration due to gravity. When we think about P2, the starting pressure is no longer atmospheric. It has a component of atmosphere in it, but it is P1 rather than atmosphere. So we will add P1 at the beginning here, and then we also need to account for the pressure of the column of water itself. And that is the, that doesn't look like a row, row water, as in the density of water, times the height of that column, H2, times the same acceleration due to gravity. So if we were to solve this, we would plug in our numbers for all of these guys, and then we would uh, plug in P1 here and do the same and be able to solve for both P1 and P2.